you had a um, so-called so uh, Russian school of piano playing background. What is this different school, uh, German, Russian, all of that, American? Is there any of this, or is it just certain teachers with certain temperaments? Um, well, I think if I had to, yes, I think the only way I would define a Russian school. It's okay. Uh, it's partially, of course, the temperament of the of the person uh, versus a German temperament. But but more than that, I suppose it is. I mean, which is the way they play music, not the way they the way they interpret music is through their temperaments. But I think more than that, I think the, I would say that the Russian puts piano almost before the music and the German puts the music before the piano. If I could put it that way. Perfect. Uh, that would be, uh, every Russian, I don't care, he doesn't have to play with much feeling or much uh, have much soul, or whatever you want, but he does play the instrument extraordinarily. Pianism, first. Pianism is v vital, yeah. and to a, to well, European, no. Mm -hmm. That really is an important point. That really is the difference. I think so. Um, who have been the most influential pianists in your development? Certainly, we know about Horowitz, but there must be others. Mm. Quite a few, I think. Uh, Rachmaninoff, certainly. I heard him play when I was very young. Uh, and through recordings. Sure, through recordings. Corto. He had a magic, didn't he? Tremendous. Then, I mean, many shortcomings, but shortcomings which he transcended for me yes and I, I you know I don't know that I think here in this country in America we tend to make those shortcomings too important I mean notes or whatever it is you know he tended to slide around in a bit and forget but by God there was something there was an essence that he captured Chopin and Schumann and unbelievably beautiful um, I think uh, Schnabel. Yet you're not a Beethoven player per se, and yet no, I'm not. Yet, you know, I played a lot when I was much younger, and I got into the into the uh, romantic, big romantic repertoire essentially for well, first because it's part of me, second because through recordings, I mean, that's what they wanted me to record because that sold the most, and. Uh, Actually, you've touched upon a very a problem of mine, which is that <laughs> I don't feel I, I may have the limitation. Maybe you don't want me to go on about oh, this. Oh, perfect. I don't uh, feel I have the limitation of uh, of a style or something which I can't get to. Uh, uh, the there isn't a kind of music somehow that I don't feel capable of, of playing. Yes. Uh, which makes gives me an open feel and, and gives me a lot of troubles because it's a vast area. And the idea of especially, you know, going into certain areas. So I have had periods of time when I've done a lot of Beethoven playing and I've had tremendous success with it, which a lot of people would be surprised at mm -hmm. uh, because I don't play a lot of it. Yes. So, it's been, dis it's been upsetting to me to know that, and I, I, I don't know where to concentrate because people like to pigeonhole you. Yes, yes. And uh, it's very difficult. So what you're saying it's an is image, you know. That's yes, there's an image there, and that you're also saying an important thing is that you yourself, the inner core of you, <coughs> have no trouble with these other idioms. No. but circumstance, recording companies, uh, and part of your own <coughs> temperament responds to the to the romantic repertory, so... And people are amazing when they want, you know, they become quite deaf. They don't hear what you're putting, in, you're, what you're putting out, necessarily. If their mind is expecting 
something else from you, and you could be playing something absolutely magnificent, they don't hear it because mm -hmm. they're looking for something else. Very good. Uh, have you ever noticed, um, for instance, your wife is a painter. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever noticed that painters in general love music? They paint to it, they, they talk about it often, but many musicians lack any visual sense. That's true. Have you ever had any thoughts about that? Uh, yeah, I'm amazed at my lack of visual sense. It, it comes up, but I like paintings. Yes. Uh, but I don't have a visual sense. There's no question about it. I mean, my I don't see things that are obvious to a lot of people. And they say, you did see that? I said, no, I didn't see it. Uh, so I, I'm, I think you're right. I don't know why. Yeah, I've seen it often with uh, musicians. When I'm looking down, I'm just thinking of many qu what questions. But I'm listening very carefully, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, the head. It's something to do. Things go through my head a lot, but not through my eyes. I yeah. Have you? Uh, now I'm going to just uh, talk about these two things. Uh, Rubinstein has just died. What? What was his career? What? What? What was his career uh, to the piano? And and in your uh, world, did he influence you? Mm. This was an amazing yeah. man. Amazing man, an amazing, really amazing, a, good, a great artist and, and, and a great pianist. Uh, he's a man who, I would put Rubenstein, and I've always said this, he represented to me mostly all the qualities of joy, earth, uh, at their best. Uh, everything was, he went, he, ma he managed to walk the tightrope, I think, of, of uh, Rubato's playing in the most beautiful way. It was, it was never, I think he was probably the most universally uh, accepted love pianist of all. Because nothing was ever over done, questionable, nothing was revolutionary. It was almost like a normalcy. It was o a normalcy, a natural, which uh, is, was absolutely beautiful. Uh, but I was never surprised no. with Rubenstein. And this is a very important thing to me, to be surprised, to expect something. I was never, or rarely, should I say, uh, I've always, well, the man who, was, who, was, who I think, who I've left out, who's been, I think, who's one of the greatest artists is Richter. Yeah. And I say artist, I'm talking about, about pianist. This man, when he's in form and when he plays, I mean, he, can, he does take me, he takes you somewhere else. He transcends, he, he takes you away from where you are. Mm -hmm. Now that, for me, See, that's what music is about for me. It, it's to really put you into another, into another world. Richter, interestingly enough, is one of the few pianists that um, that paints as well. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, what about Michelangeli? There's yeah. a most interesting, very interesting, fascinating pianist, and uh, plays very little. And I understand. <laughs> I mean, everybody says he's difficult, mad, whatever, strange. I don't think he's that um, strange. I mean, I, I don't know him, but uh, he's, he's, look, he has, the, he, da, he has problems with pianos. So do we all. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, he, everything, he's a perfectionist. And he he's, doesn't play much, and he likes, uh, he wants everything to be right when he does play. Let me ask you about this, this oh, I will call it, although it's images of a different character, I will call perfectionism a certain form of disease because everything under whatever this image is becomes sour. And the piano has to be perfect, and the hall has yeah, to be well. perfect, and 
you you and I were listening to a recording and there was a part of you that all of a sudden said, oh, I wish I didn't make it in a way or have it released because that minute it, it didn't come up to a certain... Mm -hmm. Doesn't this, in a certain sense, stop one? Yes. This image of perfectionism. Yes, it does. Uh, that's a that's a difficult subject because nothing is ever perfect. First of all, now what do we strive for? Do we strive for perfection, or do we strive? <coughs> See, I don't. What my my attitude towards music is is this: practice as much as you have to, can, want to, or I mean, to get what you want. <coughs> then. Let it all go and perform and create on the stage as though it's <clears throat> just as though you hadn't practiced. Surprise yourself. Listen. Because, I mean, uh, you're <laughs> if you don't listen, you're, gonna, oh, you're not going to play for the whole. You, you have to change everything anyway, the different piano, different horn, so on and so on. So, I think that the idea of striving for perfection is, a, is not a good one at all. I think the idea is to, how, well, how can I put that? It's to strive for, mm, the word is bad. It's another word. What is the word? <coughs> Think. Uh, uh, it's a very important question. No, because perfection is puts you in a vice. Perfection is, is is a terrible word. I mean, it, it it's it's destroyed more people. And yet, many <coughs> people think of this as, oh, this is wonderful to be a perfectionist. Mm, no, it isn't. No, that's what we're really saying. But, but the uh, but the alternate. The other side of that is is also not wonderful. No, can't so, be slovenly. So it's somewhere. It's just the doing of it and the, and, and the letting go. The letting this is go. The package for the day. I cannot, I cannot make my ideals more than today. That's right. And I think the realization finally that I know what happened to me was that when I stopped trying to make today's performance like yesterday's, which I liked, mm -hmm. I can't, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. You can never repeat the performance. And if you try to, you say, God, I played well yesterday, and I want to do that again. Finished. Strangled. You, you cannot do that. So it's, it's, and this is an attitude towards life, which it's not an easy one, I must tell you. It's, it's, every day is another one, and it's very difficult. Though. I want to ask you this. Um, <coughs> what, do you, what do you expect of an audience? Audiences often, even sometimes in a lustful way, expect certain things from <laughs> the artist. They can be really quite bloodthirsty. But what does, did you ever come out and say to yourself, I expect this audience to really understand me today? Or is it just a blank? You go out and they're there. <coughs> or is it with hope? Well, I suppose I expect or what I, or I like If they really like something, I like to see the reaction if they really like it. If they don't, okay. But mm -hmm. I mean, it's important to get that interaction going. If, 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 if they applaud equally after something that has really been awfully good and something that has been just good, then I'm very disturbed. It's not a, uh, I feel, well, they don't know the difference. But once, when they know, I expect them to know the difference between something that's really good and something that's just average. And uh, that's, that I think is one thing. And I like them to show their feelings. Now after a concert, you like them to come back and sure. talk to you? Yes. Yeah. I don't like to be uh, alone and just lock myself away and go up. That I, I find, I know many artists who do and I, I cannot figure that out. Contact's when important, sorry. No, no. When practicing, when playing, there is a difference between attention and concentration. Attention is a freedom 
and that freedom has no resistance. But concentration is like a struggle. I will concentrate, a kind of taming. Uh, I have once heard the, the phrase, all effort is violence. What about in playing? Students would like to know your opinion of the effort is violence, this taming, but attention is just being in it. Do you have any ideas on that? We all, we're so geared to, oh yes, he was very concentrated. Yet mm -hmm. concentration is almost like an exclusion of everything. Yes. When you're at your best, there's attention. The audience is, everything is there, right? Yes. Is there, this is a difficult well, that's topic. A, that's a difficult, because you're using words and we're, 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 we're semantics here. Yes. When you're at your best, uh, what happens, and this has obviously been said before, you are in con kind of a state of <coughs> um, you're aware of everything and you're and you're just uh, but you are <laughs> you're focused on you know it's like seeing <coughs> it's like looking at a painting mm -hmm. let's say and you see, you can see something very beautiful in the painting, and you, and you still see the whole painting at the same time that you're looking at something very special, uh, a specific spot in the painting. <coughs> well, this, I think, if that is any kind of analogy at all, you've got a very broad vision. You've got the whole, the whole piece in front of everything, mm -hmm. and yet you're focused on each the details. If you're just focused on a detail, which you may be calling concentration, yes. that's not good. Yes. <clears throat> you've got to see the whole picture yes. and, and also the part of the picture. Yes. And at that point, you really become, it, it, it just flows out by itself. And you're, you're, you're listening and it's just happening. Wonderful answer. It's a tough, it's a difficult answer. No, but a very important question it's because... Difficult it, will, it can open up a lot of people if they only understand that just, just that exclusion of concentration yeah. is not enough. That's a, a, a loaded word. There has to be that attention to the whole. Yes, I mean, I mean if you sit down and you try to get start the tempo of a piece, for instance, you think the first two measures, it's not enough. Uh, you're gonna, it's not enough. You have to somehow that have, you have to go through more. You have to feel that whole piece in you. I can't explain you and, and relax and feel the entire work Bef and then and then you will take the first few bars maybe but you've got to feel the whole work at the same time now coming from that area when you play how do you keep the brain because this is part of this whole thing from chattering away you're not in the mood to be out there uh, there's that mental how do you diminish the mental conflict, really focusing in on the, on the music? Maybe you say, oh, I'm in pain today, or this chatter goes on, oh, I'm going to be divorced tomorrow, or, did the <coughs> lawyer call me, or whatever it is. Mm. It's curious, but sometimes... Automatic pilot, maybe, is the best. You know, I've noticed during some of the many crises that happened in everybody's life, uh, Sometimes some of my best performances have been during those periods. It's very curious. It's like a total. Uh, uh, what you, what's the word? Uh, uh, you could let it go, and the mind clears up, or what? Yeah, I mean. Or you let the chattering happen and just play. No, it somehow diminishes. Yeah, it's so. The problem is so. Let's say it's a clear problem, a clear crisis. Is something that you can handle, but when it's not clear, you know, then the, then the chattering goes on. You see, and that's that's where the trouble is. When you know, but when it's a very clear cut thing, you, I've noticed that, and I played it once or twice, uh, several times under very very under those conditions, and they've been some of my best concerts. I say, how is this possible? You see, it, it, and I and maybe the answer is just what I'm. Uh, it's you just do it because you're. It's so obvious that that 
it, it's a way of expressing the opposite of the crisis. I can't explain it, but it, it, it's so clear. It's clean. It's clear. The crisis is, but it's this uh, little stuff that all the little silly things that that make the chatter. Right. You know, the know. crisis is so clear that in a sense you're going out naked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be. That would be. True. You're a pianist in a 19th century career. I, wa I said to you before, and I wasn't really joking, it's hard <laughs> to be Byronic in the 21st century. Yes. As a pianist, playing music mostly that was composed a century or more <coughs> ago, mm -hmm. do you ever feel misplaced? Obviously, the great mass public is not interested in this music anymore. Alienated. How do you feel about these? Yeah. I feel, uh, well, I feel, I'm, I, I'm increasingly beginning to feel that, I think, <laughs> misplaced. Hmm. I think, we're go as you said very well, we're, not in the tw we're now in the, what is it? The 21st 20 century. 21st century already. We really are. We're, we're almost at the millennium now, and we are, it's, it's, another, it's another world. It's, we're, it's another world from, from 20 years ago. I mean, Even 20 years ago. Oh, yes. Have you noticed, Byron, that there are very few piano recitals in the world, even compared to 20 years ago? L and even then, at Town Hall, every kid that made a debut would play some modern work. Now, no one even dares that. Very little contemporary music played at all, and fewer recitals. Fewer recitals. Yeah. <clears throat> Orchestral appearances more so. More, That's yes. what it seems a career is based on. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yes, well, because uh, I thought, <coughs> yet, <coughs> yet, yet, uh, recitals are what made all great artists' careers, all great pianists, certainly. Yeah, make careers in recital. Because you can't, <coughs> you can't tell an artist at the piano in a concerto, <coughs> over a period of a, a evening. Yeah. No, what I think is happening, that is very difficult, is that it's an age. Where, no matter what you do. There is something that comes f just two minutes later that will, you haven't got time to digest anything. There's so much going on in so many areas of, the, of, of, the, of art, music, whatever, that nothing stands out anymore. And, and therefore, this kind of, uh, in, in this, there, were, there are no spaces anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. There are no breathing spaces. I asked Ashkenazi, I said, uh, are we entering a dark ages again? He said, the human race has always been in the dark ages for him. What, what do you think? Are we, are we now in a spiritually <coughs> um, lighted time? Even our today, I mean, the, the contemporary composer is is almost uh, an anachronism. I mean, even the, the art that communicates is a collaborative art with four rock stars, you know, uh, in violent clothing, with a whip on their side or whatever. Right. Kids, <coughs> kids respond to it very well. They, very well. They, they're, they're not, they don't see this as dangerous, and yet we see it almost as degenerate. Right. What's going on? Why is the classical artist so out of touch? Is he not necessary? Well, I have a very, I have a feeling that before <laughs> too long, I mean, we have, we package things now so that you don't feel <coughs> that you've been hearing the Beethoven symphonies for the millionth time because they're packaged in another way. Well, or, yeah, keep or